Now you, we start seated. All right. Hi, everybody. Today, we're starting laying down with a few different options to uh, open our heart. So you can either roll up a blanket like this, a folded up blanket, and just put at the end of the tailbone here and lay the spine down on top, letting the head rest on the ground, arms come out to your side, that's one option. Or you can take a block and do something kind of similar, either placing it across the back, just at the bottom of the shoulder blades here, or if you're feeling really open through the heart, you can place it sort of on this medium height like this here, also along the spine. So it's almost like a supported fish posture. That's only if you're already feeling very open. Otherwise, I recommend having it just across the shoulder blades. From here, <laughs> from here, you can either keep the knees bent with the feet wide, so the knees are knocking against each other like this, or have the legs straight down in Shavasana, or have the legs in Supta Baddha Konasana, supine bound angle posture. If you have your legs open like this and you're working on opening up the hips, but it feels really intense to have them all the way open with no support, you can take your two blocks and put them under the legs, in which case the rolled up blanket is great under the back if you wish for that heart opener. You don't have to do the heart opener, but any stretch for the imagination. But it does feel really good. And if you are here, in this heart opener, and you want to have the arms above the head, grasping one wrist with the other, that's fine too, as long as it's comfortable to do this and not aggravating on your rotator cuffs, who are basically your shoulders. So we're just going to lay here for a minute and breathe. Let me just pop this through the collars of what I'm breathing. Yeah. So four part breathing is um, so we bring our awareness to four different parts of the body. And it's like we're filling from the bottom up. So the way it works is as you inhale, you bring your attention to the pelvic floor and just sort of let it relax down. It's not a pushing, but it's just a relaxing. For some of us who might walk around in life, very tight ass as we call it, you actually might feel it on a downward motion there. So um, the idea, relax the pelvic floor, and then from there, breathe, filling into the belly, continuing inhaling, breathing into the rib cage, expanding, continuing that breathing, the upper chest will fill up as well. So it's a full deep belly breathing, filling in from the bottom up. And as we exhale, uh, the, the top of the chest, deflates first, then the ribs start to pull back towards each other. Finally, the belly moves back towards the spine. The pelvic floor will just naturally uh, rise a little bit at the end of that exhale. So that's what we're gonna do as we're laying here, just bringing our awareness to these areas, breathing fully. Oh, and since we're laying down here, if you like, some people, I like to do this, you can take a hand to the belly. You can take, also take another hand if you want. You can have both hands on the belly. You can have one hand on the belly and one hand on the chest. And sometimes this will help with the visualization of filling through the entire, you know, middle body. Today, we're going to cultivate an internal landscape or a certain kind of mood. It's a practice adopted from uh, Taoist practices. We learned it. Uh, from our teacher, Teo Semko, who learned it from his teacher, Glenn Morris. And the concept is called the secret smile. And the idea is in practicing and in life, if you are cultivating a certain uh, emotional, mental, emotional landscape, no matter what happens to you, you have this sort of baseline space internally to fall back upon. So the emotional landscape is five-part landscape built out of five things, calm or relaxed calm, confidence as in a sense of, I got this, laughter or happiness, love and bliss. 
And there are different versions of this, but the way we're going to teach it today, we're going to open up these feelings in different parts of our body where they reside. Relaxed calm being around the pelvic floor, confidence being a gut feeling from the belly, laughter coming from the lungs and the ribs, love coming from the area around the sternum, just above the heart into the center of the chest, and bliss coming from the forehead or third eye area. For now, though, as we lay here, just cultivate deep breath, really inhaling all the way down to the base of the pelvic floor. And we'll show you what that feels like in a second. And when exhaling, really allowing everything to come up from the base there. So inhaling, pelvic floor expands. Belly rises, ribs come out, upper chest expands just a little bit. And when you exhale, upper chest comes back down, ribs come back in, belly comes back towards the spine, and pelvic floor lifts gently up naturally. We'll go over this more so it begins to make more and more sense. But for now, let's just take the pads of our fingers and find that area where the ribs split. That should be pretty easy to find if you have a support under your back. And just press in with the finger pads, not the fingertips, but just sort of gently press with the finger pads and the muscles there. And draw little circles with the fingers as you gently press in. If it hurts to press in here, back up a little bit and maybe just chafe the fingers in this area of right where the ribs split. So it's right at the base of the sternum. The area is called the xiphoid process. So we'll inhale deeply here. Exhale completely. As you massage. Little circle. When you're ready, we'll switch directions, taking those little circles the other way. And then when you're ready, you can just slide the hands down either side of the belly along the oblique muscles that's on either side of the rectus abdominis, the muscles of the center. You can press in a little bit as you do that. Just smoothing the energy down through your torso. And then let's take the hands, just the palms of the hands, right to the heart if you want. You can just come into a regular Shavasana here, taking the support out from behind your back, straightening out the legs towards the corner to the mat, and then just resting one palm on top of the other, just above the chest. So that area, so that I'll show you right here, the sternum. And as we lay here with our hands here, let's cultivate the concept of love. It does not have to be romantic love. It could be love that you feel for a beloved pet or a family member, or just love for a beautiful sunset or landscape that you uh, feel so rewarded to experience. And if you want, you can chafe your hands against that area, against the sternum, sort of drawing little circles with the hands here, one on top of the other. Bringing warmth to this area, feeling the openness that you just brought out from resting here with the support under our backs, even if you're no longer supported. Feeling that sense of love. There's a deep, all encompassing. And then when you're ready, let's draw our legs together and reach out long, stretching to wake up our bellies after that little short practice of cultivation and emotion of love. And when you're ready, feel free to roll to one side or the other and we'll just rest here for a second in a fetal position.
And then let's push ourselves up to a comfortable seat, taking the time to sit up on a folded up blanket. You can even fold it this much or a bunch <laughs> so that you get a nice tall seat like this. And we'll do a little bit of a cultivation of fire in the body and also expanding our lung capacity. This area, will, just like the area that we were running here corresponds to love. This is the area that corresponds to laughter. When you are laughing at sort of a big belly joke, your lungs might even, your ribs might start to hurt because you're laughing so hard and get doubled over. That's the area that we want to cultivate. The muscles in between the ribs are called the intercostal muscles. We really want to work on sort of expanding and contracting through there and also expanding lung capacity. So the way that we do this traditionally in yoga is called Kapalabhati breathing. That means skull shining breath. Some people call it breath of fire. Some people call it bellows breath. It's a pumping breath. So it almost looks like we're gonna hyperventilate, but basically what it is is a forceful exhale, passive inhale. I'll show you really quick from the side so you can see what my belly is doing here as I practice this breathing. I'm gonna inhale deeply and then begin exhaling. So as you see, as I exhale, I'm drawing my navel back towards my spine and then just releasing. And as I release, an inhale happens naturally. Don't think about it too hard. It's kind of one of those things where it'll just start to make sense, but just emphasize in your mind the push, push, push of the exhale, even though it's really a pull, pulling that navel towards the spine. So when you're ready, let's inhale the arms out wide and up one time for Pranamudra. Exhale, push the hands down one more time for the sweeping the energy through our body, inhaling up, exhaling, pushing down. Hands can rest palm face down on the knees or palm face up or in chin or yana mudra, whatever your choice is. We'll inhale deeply, exhale completely. And inhale three quarters of the way to prepare for a round of Kapalabhati. We'll do about 30 breaths. Take it at your own pace. And then at the end of your last exhale, push your hands into the ground as you fold forward, pushing all the air out of your chest. When you need to inhale, inhale, coming back up to a nice long spine here. And exhale. Again, inhale, arms out wide and up for prana mudra. Exhale, push the hands down. Again, inhaling, maybe leaning forward a little bit as you scoop up energy from the room around you. Exhaling, pushing back down. Hands rest on knees, however you want them to rest. And we will prepare for our second round of Kapalabhati breathing. This time, 60 breaths. Again, take this at your own pace. You don't need to count with me. Inhaling deeply. Exhale completely. Inhaling deeply to prepare and begin when you're ready. Just a second. 
And then when you need to inhale, inhale deeply, coming back up to seated. And when you're ready, exhaling. Two more rounds of Prana Mudra. Inhaling, wide and up. Exhaling, push it back down. Inhaling, arms out wide and up. Exhaling, push it back down. Hands come to knees. This third round will be for 90. When you're ready, inhale deeply. Exhale completely. <laughs> Eager beaver up in here. <laughs> when you're ready, we'll inhale to prepare for our last round of Kapha Bhakti. Exhaling completely, pull forward, pushing the air out of you again, holding the breath out for just a second. And then when you need to inhale, inhale deeply, coming back up to seated. And exhaling completely when you're ready. So not only was that cultivation for the muscles between the ribs and the lung area, but also you might have noticed it was a cultivation for the strength of the belly as we are using the muscles of the belly to push the air out of us. That is that sense of determination, and confidence and drive. I got this, I'm gonna teach this yoga class without messing up <laughs> or whatever it is that your task is that you have out of you. It's that sense of confidence. So we felt a sense of love this is where the sense of laughter and play comes from. Here's where the sense of confidence comes from. All useful qualities to cultivate within the mind as we deal with uncomfortable situations in life. Unfortunately, we've all got a few of those left ahead of us. So at this point, I want to come in the seat into a squat for just a second. And you can either come into a plain old yoga squat like this. You could do a higher up squat like that. But if you do a higher up squat, tuck the tail. Don't stick your way out into other Mongolia there. Or another option, which I would recommend perhaps over the higher squat, is to sit on a block, which you can sit on at any height, low, medium, high, whatever you like. And the reason being that even if you've got a really great squat, find your comfort in this because we're gonna inhale deeply and see what it feels like to have the pelvic floor expand at the base of the inhale. So let's give it a try here. Just hang out in your squat, trying to keep a nice open heart and long spine, trying not to stick the tail out way too far behind you, tucking the tail slightly. Let's inhale deeply and exhale. Inhale deeply, exhale completely. So you see as you inhale, you almost feel the pelvic floor push against the bottom of your pants as you're inhaling. There's a reason why this is a traditional uh, position for cleaning out the body, because the body wants to push down. And that sort of pushing down and grounded energy is partially with that sort of sense of relaxed calm that we're trying to cultivate as well. So from here, let's come to hands and knees. You can either 
Come the hands and knees just on your mat, however you like, or you can put a blanket right underneath of your knees. Knees are right on your hips, hands are right on your shoulders, and grind the spine of pizza. This is world famous cat cow extravaganza. So, the cat cow extravaganza <laughs> starts like this. We're going to inhale, um, uh, tailbone rises, belly drops, head comes up. As we exhale, drop the tailbone, round the back, drop the head. Inhaling, tailbone comes up, belly drops, head looks up. Exhale, and tailbone drops, spine rounds, head drops. So just going back and forth, inhaling into cow, exhaling into cat. Some people like to see if they can start at the bottom and work their way up. That's a fun thing to do if you want to. We're getting this sort of back and forth motion into the spine. Now we're going to kind of get a, a bit of a sideways circular motion into the spine. So inhaling in the cow on the exhale, round the ribs to one side and round yourself in the cat. Inhaling, rounding the ribs to the other side and coming in the cow. So now we're making a circular motion with the spine. You can imagine that you're torso is inside of a barrel and you're trying to rub your body against every um, bit of the surface, the inner circumference of that barrel. You can let the head just kind of relax, let it be loose. Maybe it goes, you know, in the direction with the spine, but let it be relaxed, so no tension in the neck. And when you're ready, go ahead and switch the direction that you're drawing that spinal circle. Again, letting the head just be loose with the spine. And just breathing deeply. Even if you're not breathing in the cow specifically, that exhale, inhaling in the cow, exhaling in the cat, just take big, big deep breaths into the body as we do this. And then when you're ready, next time you exhale, we'll just make our way back to a neutral spine. And we're going to open up, we're going to do some stuff for the shoulders here, open up the shoulders. Um, this will also be a stretch for the lungs and the ribs, since we'll be stretching for the side body and twisting. So. so let's start with our left hand and we'll like ground into the left hand. You can spread the fingers really wide so you got a nice stable base on that left hand. Turn to the right, reach up with that right arm. Inhaling, reaching long. On an exhale, we're going to take that right arm and take it underneath of the left arm, coming down to the shoulder, uh, coming down to the ear if you can. If you need, um, you know, if it's a little hard to make your way all the way to the ground, you can always uh, pad with a block or a blanket or something like that. And so we're just breathing into this stretch on the back of the right arm, right shoulder. And then if you want a little extra twist, you can interlace the left fingers of the, with the right hand and try straightening that elbow. That'll give you a little bit more of a twist. Another thing you can do is try inhaling the hand, left arm up to the sky, exhale it down to the back. And then you can check in with that spine, make sure it's not sticking out to one side or the other, but that, the, that, um, that your hips are facing towards the earth. And then if you want, you can snake that left hand around. Maybe it finds the outer, upper right thigh. Just breathe into this stretch no matter where you are in it. Keep twisting to the right, or to the left, sorry. <laughs> and if you have the hand wrapped around, we're gonna inhale it back up towards the sky. No matter where your hand is, we're gonna exhale it down right underneath your left shoulder. We're gonna press into the left arm, coming back up, turn to the right, reach that right arm up towards the sky. Exhale, right arm comes back down to meet the mat. Do the same thing on the other side. So spreading the fingers of the right hand very wide, we're gonna to turn to the left, reach up towards the sky, inhaling here. Exhale, send that left arm underneath of the right arm, coming down onto the left shoulder, left ear. Use a prop if you need to help 
at all. If you need more twist, you can take that right arm on top of the left, interlace the fingers and try straightening that right arm. You can also inhale that right arm up to the sky. Exhale it down to the sacrum. Check in with your sacrum. Make sure your hips are pointing towards the floor and then maybe you find your hand finds its way around to the outer upper left thigh. Again, breathing deeply, deeply no matter where you are in this twist, working the twist, twisting to the right. And then if you have that arm wrapped around, you can inhale it back up towards the sky. No matter where your hand is, exhale it down underneath the left, underneath the right shoulder, press into the right arm, reaching up, turn to the left, reach that left arm up towards the sky, inhaling, exhale, coming back down to tabletop. And then let's do rabbit. And then playful puppy if you want to take it a little further. But with rabbit, we'll just come down to the elbows, like sphinx sort of. And then you're just going to tilt the head towards, tilt the crown of the head towards the earth. So we have this big opening across the shoulders here. And you can work on rolling those shoulders down and back and, and pressing them sort of towards each other in the back. If you're feeling okay here and you want more of a stretch and you have a very confident, you feel okay in your rotator cuffs, not worried about straining them too much. You can work your hands out a little bit more, drop um, chest towards the earth, coming down to the crown of the head, or even the side of the head. If you want to get the chest a little closer, you can bring it, one of your ears to the mat, or some people like to bring the chin to the mat. If you're doing a head side, Make sure you turn the head to each side so you get the even stretch. Breathing into this stretch, opening across the back, shoulders are moving down and back, heart is opening. And then when you're ready, we'll slowly start to walk our way back up towards tabletop. And then from here, let's just come right back to child's pose for a second. Again, inhaling deeply and feeling the pelvic floor open up at the beginning of the inhale. Feeling the belly press in the legs, the lungs expand around the thighs. The upper chest come up a little bit towards the ears. And then exhaling, feeling the upper chest come back down, lungs come back in, belly comes back towards the spine, pelvic floor rises gently up. Again, inhaling deeply, feeling that pelvic floor open, belly press against the thighs, lungs expand, upper chest expand, exhaling, feeling the upper chest contract, the lungs come back in, the belly comes back towards thighs, pelvic floor rises gently up. So now when you're ready, let's tuck our toes and walk our hands back towards our knees, lifting up the hips. Walking the hands back towards the feet, coming into a forward fold for just a second, grabbing opposite elbows and swaying side to side. Just for a second. We're going to do a little bit of standing stuff here, but for now, just allow yourself a loose forward fold. Hmm. And then when you're ready, you can slowly roll yourself up to standing, maybe shaking yourself a little bit as you come to standing in preparation for the incredible bounce we're about to have now. So find yourself a comfortable shake for the body, a comfortable bounce for the body. This is when we can start really cultivating a sense of relaxed calm because it's really hard to feel uptight and nervous when you're shaken. And I mean, the great thing about practicing yoga over the internet is that no one's going to watch you bounce or shake. So you can do whatever you like. A few options are hopping in place, particularly if you're feeling extra sluggish and you want to bring the energy up. Another option is taking the feet wide and sort of just knocking it all out, sloughing it all off, particularly if you're feeling very up in your head and you want to feel grounded. Because we're trying to cultivate a sense of relaxed calm, I would recommend 
sort of a wide-legged <laughs> shake it all down kind of thing like what we're doing. The shake is coming from the hips here. It's not coming from my shoulders. It's coming from my hips. So maybe my shoulders are shaking, but it's really my hips that are doing the work here. And at this point, I'm just gonna, I personally, you don't have to, you can just keep shaking in place if you like, but I'm gonna bring my feet about mats with distance and start just sort of twisting and shaking, letting my arms sway side to side as I do this. So opening up again through the side bodies here as we twist. Um, let's do Kati Trakasana. Let's do um, yoga style twisting today instead of our usual Tibetan twisting. So this twist is the Kriya, which means action. It's a dynamic yoga pose. And it goes like this. I'm gonna twist to one side with one hand on the shoulder like this, and then twist to the other side. So I'm done bouncing for now. You can keep bouncing while you do this if you like, and it feels good. Or you can just kind of keep the hips as centered as possible. So I'm not trying to turn from side to side like this as much as keeping the twist waist up. Opening through my heart. It's like I'm tapping a shoulder and I'm tapping another. And now you can let it become sloopy if you like. And let the arms swing side to side, bounce a little bit, shake a little bit. No need to stay too rigid as we twist and bounce. No need to stay too rigid at all, honestly. A little bit of flexibility internally is as important as a really great downward facing dog or a split or any other feet of flexible strength. <laughs> there we go, next. And then we can just bring this back to shaking, swimming. Oh, great, all right. Once we've done shaking it all off, and I mean, really allowing yourself to shake it all off. It could be shaking one arm and one leg, shaking the other arm, the other leg, shaking the head side to side. Don't get too busy here. At this point, let's on the stillness, bringing the, mat, the feet a little bit, uh, maybe more narrow than that's with distance. And I'm just going to start doing the front stroke here, the breast stroke, the crawl, whatever this swimming movement is called. I'll show you from the side. It looks like this. And what I'm noticing as I do this is I'm feeling my side body get engaged and draw my hips into this movement. So if your hips want to come into the movement and start figurating back to front, figure eights like this. Keep swimming with the hands on the hips if you prefer. And we'll just kind of continue with this loose, snaky movement. And then when you're ready, Let's do the back stroke for a bit. So you can come to stillness and just find your arms going back. The hips are still, the feet are in place. And then if you want to let the hips get involved, it's doing a figure eight motion the other way. So the hands on the hips would look like this. Ooh, squeaky board. There we go. Still squeaking. All right, hip rolls, knee rolls, similar to a stop and wood. You want to? Sure, if you're time. We have plenty of time. Do it. Just hip rolls. Hip rolls. Ow. So hip rolls. <laughs> step out to about mass width distance with your feet and just roll through the hips. Very simple. Making big circles with your hips. Very gratifying though. Like like the way bread and butter is gratifying, you know? Simple, mm. but fulfilling, satisfying. That's hip rolls, the bread and butter of our practice. And when you're ready, switch the direction that you're drawing that circle.
and then you can come back to center. Let's bring the feet together. And then you were going to bring the hands just above the knees. We're going to make little circles with the knees doing this. So not funny like little, this, but like that. Funny little talking the tail. Early 20th century dance or something. <laughs> and then switch the direction. You might find your ankles rolling out a bit while you do this as well. Maybe you can go like this with the other hand. <laughs> You'll be ready for that 1920s New Year's extravaganza. <laughs> All right. And you can uh, just shake out the legs, span up. Sumo twist. twists. Restore your dignity. Still get at home. No one's got any dignity. <laughs> so you're going to step out pretty wide. Take, turn to take the feet out at about a 45 degree angle and squat down. Again. And the knees. Tuck the tail. She said. Not this. This. I know it looks very uh, provocative, but we want a long spine for this. I want to take our hands just yeah, inside. Okay. I don't know. Just, just, take our hands just inside. Uh, just above the knees inside here. And we're going to inhale in the middle. Exhale, straighten one arm, twisting to one side. And then inhale, we come back through center. Exhale, twisting to the other side. So we're just going back and forth, inhaling through the center, exhaling as we twist. Mm. Again, take this at your own pace. I'm going kind of fast, but you don't have to. The slower you go, really, the more delicious it is. And then you can come back to center. We're going to let the upper body hang down, interlace the fingers here. Well, let's turn our feet first so oh, yes. parallel to each other, just so we don't knock ourselves over, because we're going to get some swinging. Oh, yes. Yeah. So swinging turn, action. Yes, yeah, so turn, the, turn the feet forward. Get them out of a 45 degree angle. Now face them forward. We're going to hang down here, interlace the fingers, and we're going to start to swing a little bit. So we're going to inhale, coming up. Hips can come a little forward if you want. Exhale, coming down with a ha. So we'll do that several times. Take it at your own pace. Ha! Go as slow as you need to, or as fast as you want to. If you're too busy, just stop doing it. Breathe deep. Sit down, hang out, whatever, with your head down. And the last one, exhale. And just hang. At this point, Let's toe heel the feet so that they're coming back to, towards each other, maybe hips width distance or two fists width distance between the arches of our feet. Lean forward a little bit, maybe walking the fingers forward a little. In your four fold knees can be bent here if you like. Lean back a little bit, maybe putting the feet or the hands on the shins here. And then find that place right between that. Like you can see my hips here. They're way behind my heels. Bring them right over the heels and then pull forward through there. Mm. And then when you're ready, we'll just bounce our way back up to standing again and do just one salutation to come down to lying on our backs. So let's give it a whack. You want to teach it? You want me to? Brian's choice. Yogi's choice. Uh, I don't know which, which salutation. Any you like. Any I like, okay. Yogi's choice. Uh, you teach it this time. <laughs> the choice is that I will teach. That is the yogi's choice. Inhaling the arms out wide and up. We'll exhale, folding forward. Inhale, bring the palms halfway up the shins. Nice, long, flat back. Exhale, plant the hands next to the feet, and you can walk the feet back, coming into a high plank here. We're just gonna hang out here for a second, inhaling deeply. Then exhale completely, coming down either knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Brian will show knees, chest, chin. I will show chaturanga again, inhaling. 
and exhaling. When you come all the way down to your belly, tuck the shoulders back, inhale, into cobra, or if you really want to do upper facing dog, give yourself woo, that up dog. That's an option too. Up dog and cobra, feel free to breathe naturally here as I describe the little nuances. Cobra, the show from the side, it's not this. It's that. So it's not an L shape of the spine. I have a hyperflexible back, so don't feel bad if you aren't hanging out like this. This is a blessing and a curse. So the idea here is that I want the curve not just to be in the low back, but in the upper back too. My heart is shining open here. I'm not just coming in with these closed shoulders, but I'm really opening them up and keeping my shoulders down here, keeping my neck long. That's my cobra. My hips are down there. Upward facing dog. Do you want to show what that looks like from the side real quick? <laughs> Brian will show upper facing dog. This is like Cobra, except that you're really lifting. As you can see here, he's off his knees. That's upper facing dog. So he's hanging out on the tops of his feet here, but even still, his heart is open, his shoulders are back and down. Great, that looks beautiful. When you're ready, we'll come up to our cobra. Exhale, come all the way down. Inhale to hands and knees, just briefly. Exhale, tuck the toes, lift the hips. Downward facing dog. To some people, a resting practice. So we're just gonna get what we can out of this downward facing dog before coming down to the ground for some abdominal exercises. Again, cultivating that sense of confidence. And I got it in the belly. So for now, feel free to just allow yourself to pedal one heel down, maybe the other. Do anything you like to do in the down dog. If you like to do a twist, or you like to do maybe a flipping of the dog or something like that, go for it. Do whatever it is you need here. But when you're ready, we'll spread the hands wide in front of us and just kind of gently hop through the seated. And once you get to seated, let's come all the way back down onto our backs for some abdominal stuff. Do you want to teach us a little bit of abdominal stuff? Anything? Yeah. Well, we'll do, let's start with lower abdominals. I'm going to give you a choice. So you do leg lifts and you can either alternate them or you can do them both, lift both legs at the same time. Or you can start one way and move on to the other way, whichever you like, but in any event, nice arms, nice and long down along your side. If you need any extra support for the low back, you can kind of put your hands together, like next to each other under your butt with thumbs touching. Your choice. Um, we're going to inhale one or both legs up towards the sky. Go take a nice slow exhale, slowly lowering. And then with the next inhale, taking one or both legs up to the sky. If it's one leg, it's the opposite leg than you did the first time. And just continuing on, inhaling, inhaling, and exhale, inhaling with one or both legs up, exhaling down. So this is working into the lower abdominal muscles. Really take your time with this too. I know that this is a muscularly demanding posture, at least for me, but if you can find a sense of comfort in the discomfort, you got some real special tricks up your sleeve. And I wanna take your yoga class. <laughs> so find your comfort in this as best you can. And then the next time you inhale both legs up, we're going to leave them up. We're going to come up off of just the, the back, the, 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 the head and the upper back, just a little bit. And then we're going to reach down side to side. So first reaching down with one arm all the way as far down as you can, reaching down with the other arm. So now we're getting into the oblique muscles on the side of the abdomen. And again, swing through this, make it as comfortable as you can, make it luxurious. If, if it's too much with the legs up, you can do this with the 
Legs down, feet wide, knees touching. And then let's get some come back down. You can leave the you can let's bring the knees into the chest and just rock a little bit side to side. You can even make little circles with the knees, giving yourself a sacrum, sacral massage. Just give yourself a sacrum. Give yourself a sacrum. <laughs> it's useful to have one of those things. So we're gonna take they're really good right, to, for a sled back up towards the sky. And this time we're gonna interlace the fingers with the two pointer fingers pointing straight ahead. This is called Vaj Vajra Mudra. And we're gonna inhale and just come up off the head and the upper back as we reach towards the toes. Exhale, coming down. So again, just reaching all the, let all the motion be in the upper chest, kind of let the neck relax so we're not craning with the neck. The, the abdomen is, is pulling the body and then the necks just happen to stay in line with, happens to be in line with the rest of the body, but we're not craning the neck to try to get closer to the toes. Again, if this is too hard with the legs up, you can take the legs down. This time with the feet touch, knees go wide and you do it this way. As we reach down towards the toes, inhaling up, exhaling, rolling down. Maybe on the last one, we inhale and stay up for a few breaths. Two or three, maybe. And then you can slowly exhale, coming down. Let's let the knees come down. Let the, let the feet come down. Let the knees be um, up. And then you can take the hands wide or overhead or whatever. And just let the knees, windshield wiper, side to side. So getting a little twist in here, plus a release for our low back after all that adventure. Let's do like a, um, maybe a dynamic bridge to stretch out that abdominal That's muscles after that. Great idea. And then maybe we'll move on to see the tip of the bridge or something. But first, shall we bicycle? I do sure. miss biking all so right, much. We'll do one little bicycle and then, then we'll do the bridge. To, to Where we are, it's winter and sometimes biking can be a little bit hazardous. So we'll do it on the floor here. So for biking, I have my feet at sort of this 90 degree angle and I'm just riding here. And you can either bring your head up and gently support it with the hands. The hands aren't holding the head up, but they're just sort of hanging out together. Or you can leave the head on the mat and just bicycle like this. Either way. What would you say? Seated versus recumbent, although this is all recumbent. Mm. And then when you're ready, we'll go the other way. So sort of kicking out this time. Back pedaling. Will it teach the bridging? Yep. Cool. Thank you. And then when you're ready, we'll draw the knees in towards the chest, put the hands on top of the knees. And just draw little circles with the knees here. So this time really kind of grinding the low back into the mat. And by grinding, I mean the, the lovely, comfortable kind, <laughs> not the ouch that hurts kind of thing. So be gentle with yourself here. Switch directions, taking the knees the other way. And then soles of the feet can come right to the mat. Either kind of below the knees. Mm -hmm. You want the feet sort of below the knees here? Not so. I guess what it is is you can bring your heels close enough that your fingertips can touch them, but if your spine is really long like mine, you might want to walk the feet out just a little bit extra here from there. And then we're just going to inhale the hips up towards the sky. Rolling onto the shoulders, exhale, slowly rolling down. We're just going to do that a few times. So we're just going to make this a dynamic bridge. Inhaling up, try to keep the knees in line with the ankles and not splaying out to the side or knocking in towards each other. One thing that's kind of fun to try as you inhale up and exhale down is see if you can roll up and down the spine vertebra by vertebra as you make this movement. So that's especially interesting when I get down to my low uh, hip area here is that I really kind of have to tuck the tail pretty well mm -hmm. to kind of keep that low back connecting with the ground. 
on its peel down, and then I'll peel back up from the tailbone, inhaling back up, vertebra, vertebra, and then exhaling, rolling down first through in between the shoulder blades and the thoracic spine, then down to the lumbar spine, really tucking the tail here. I can even feel that in my glutes. So let's try that again, inhaling, rolling up. Exhale, peeling yourself back down. It's kind of like zipping up and <laughs> up and down, like zipping a Ziploc bag or something like that. Awkward metaphor a little bit. No yoga class is complete without an awkward metaphor. Mm, whatever you like. <laughs> are we are we hipped up officially? Uh, I don't know. Let's that... do one more of these. I sense that yeah. this would be the right thing to do about now. So arms out in a T. Again, you can let the knees sway side to side, just releasing any tension in the hips. And next time your knees sway over to the right side. Bring your left arm over the rest on top of your right. We'll rest here for a second and then again push ourselves back up to seated for just a couple seated hip openers. What do you want to do? You do one, I'll do one. 757. Doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> Not today. Um, seated hip openers. What would you like to do? Oh, well, let's do, um, let's, let's do this one. <laughs> no, I gotta come up with a different one. All right, bound angle. Bound angle. So bring the feet to touch. Again, I'll show this from the side. Knees go wide. Some people, if you like, you could put a block or something if you need support. You can keep blocks under the knees if you like. You don't have to. That's one option. Another right. option is you could put a block in front of you. You'll see why in a second. So in a nice tall spine here. How close should my feet be to uh, Well, as close as is comfortable for you, but we're gonna fold forward, so you might wanna leave a little space, but whatever you can do comfortably. If you if it's a little, if it's too intense with the feet real close, you can have them out a little bit further. Oh, and then we get a great hip opener no matter where your feet are with this one. And then we're just gonna inhale, and you can just hang here like this. You don't even have to do the forward fold, and you'll still get an awesome hip opener in this. But if you feel like folding forward, you can try to come forward with a flat spine. And yes, as Anne is showing, if you like, sometimes it's nice to have a, a block to, as a somewhere to be your your target for when you're going forward. We're gonna stay here for a minute, so find your comfort here. If it's like this, that's great. Here's some things that you can do to uh, open up even more through the hips, because that's really the goal here. So one thing that I like to do is take both hands to either side of the thigh, and the hand that's on the inside, I like to turn down, and the hand that's on the outside, I kind of pull up, and I do that on my other leg. And that kind of gives me a little bit more traction in my forward fold here, because my hips are more open from that little bit of flesh rotation. So that's one option. Another thing I like to do is put my hands way out in front of me and kind of just sort of wave my way down. Here's another metaphor, another awkward metaphor for this. What was it? Was uh, like a paper hanger thing? That would no, it was like a leaf. Days. It was like an like a autumn leaf. Oh, like an autumn leaf. Leveling down. Oh, it's funny. I think the paper hanger from the 70s is possibly even more awkward though than the autumn leaf. What am I thinking of? I don't know. Or maybe one of those like carnival games where you like throw a ring and try to get all the thing that's going back and forth. But yes, a block under the forehead here is delightful. And again, if you're someone with really, really, really open hips, you can place your hands on your legs here, or even on your uh, thighs, either on the knees or the thighs, and kind of push down on them as you do this, or take the hands behind you as you fold forward. Always keeping the spine long here, though. I could easily come down like this, but why bother? 
let's keep it long. Let's let the body have its space. If energy is moving around within your body, you want to lengthen it out to give it the space to move over. You don't want to crunch it all up. When you're ready, go deeper. <laughs> I thought I was going to come out, but I didn't. I don't feel like I got enough of this just yet. Or come out when you're ready. But we'll still be here for another few breaths. And then when you're ready, you walk the hands back. Ever so slowly, taking your time. Might feel some real deep opening through the insides of the hamstrings here and the insides of the thighs. So let's take our hands to lower knee. Oh, that was real. And then from here, let's put the hands behind us and again, flipping these kind of sway side to side. Mm. And then for just a second, I want to come into meditation before we get down, get down and in our shavasanas. So again, find yourself a comfortable seat, possibly sitting up on a folded blanket or a block, if that's comfortable for you. Inhaling the arms out wide and up, just scooping up the energy of the space. Exhaling, pushing down. Hands can rest on the lap. You can close your eyes if you like, just inhaling deeply. Exhaling completely. Inhaling deeply, feeling the pelvic floor expand at the beginning of the inhale. Exhaling completely. On your next deep inhale, envision a state of other Relaxed, calm. Sinking all your energy down to the pelvic floor as you inhale. And exhaling completely, keeping the energy down on the pelvic floor. You're rooted, you're grounded, you're calm. And then on your next inhale, in addition to that sense of calm, Feel a sense of confidence working its way up to the belly. So there's that sense of calm, that sense of, I got this. If only that you're able to breathe, you can be confident about that. Inhaling deeply, calm and confident. Exhaling completely. If a small smile comes to your face at any point during this practice, it's totally fine. On your next inhale, in addition to that sense of calm and that sense of confidence, let's bring in a sense of happiness and laughter. So you can think about something that you find actually very funny. If it's a mean hearted humor, you might want to take the mean hearted quality out of it as best you can and just keep the humor. Whatever that may be. So feeling that calm, confidence, laughter, all working together on your inhale. And exhaling deeply when you're ready. Inhaling a sense of calm, confidence, laughter. The world amuses you with its cosmic joke. At least it amuses me with its cosmic joke. On your next inhale, let's add to that calm, confidence, laughter, love. If you want to take your hand up to your sternum again and just gently rub here to create that feeling of warm fuzzies for when you see kittens or puppies or small little baby ducklings hopping around being cute. That can be love, whatever you want it to be. Warm fuzzies. So again, inhaling calm, confidence, laughter, love. Now 
the wonderful base layer of emotion to apply to any situation. That amused sense of confidence, that calm sense of knowing that you'll be able to wake up, breathe, that type of thing. And the love you feel for whatever it is you feel it for, permeating all of that. And then for bliss, I'm uh, taking some liberties and obviously how I'm teaching this practice, but please do come down to Shavasana. The path that we were taught, uh, we learned bliss as a sense of orgasmic bliss, but obviously you don't have to be orgasmic to feel bliss and you can be of any age to feel a sense of bliss. And what it is, is when, hmm, for me, sometimes that sense of bliss just comes from I see something really inspiring or something that wants me to, it brings tears to my eyes because I'm so proud or touched or happy. Or that sense of a chill up your spine when you know something just feels really right. So to add that as a cherry on top to that four layer cake of calm, confidence, laughter, love, it's a feeling, an ecstatic feeling within the body. Anything that you may have ever experienced that from, it could be riding a horse, it could be having an orgasm, it could be a drug experience, it could be a religious experience, it could be whatever you want it to be. Take your memory of that experience and as you inhale, building that root of calm, confidence, laughter, and love, allow that feeling of bliss to circulate through the body. And at this point, feel free to take the pads of your fingers to your forehead, right above the brow line, right to the center of the forehead. So if I take my fingers to my eyebrows, I go just above that and there's a little divot, like a little, uh, almost like a trench, so to speak, between my eyebrows and the middle of my forehead. That is where I'm pressing, it's in the center of that trench. So I really am only pressing with maybe my middle finger and my ring finger of each hand. Now I'm just going to gently press there, not even a push as much as just slight pressure from the pads of the fingers. And I'm going to massage the area so you can see what I'm doing in little circles like this. So just drawing little circles with the pads of the fingers on this middle forehead area. This is technically a cleansing practice for the mind. In Sanskrit, it's called Kaplaram Jardauti. There are many ways of doing this practice. This is just one of them. And just focus on that internal landscape. The amused, loving, confident, calm, and blissful internal landscape. Even if it isn't so, it's a sense of everything right with the universe. Because everything is very far from right. Draw upon those feelings to allow your life to have an undercoat of that sense. So when you're ready, we'll switch directions, drawing the little circles the other way. Breathing deep. Smiling to yourself, the secret smile. And at this point, we'll prepare for Shavasana. You can gently smooth your fingers out along your eyebrows to the edges of your face. If you're wearing glasses, you can take them off, put them somewhere safe to your side. And we'll take those fingers right at the edges of the eyebrows here, that soft little spot on the skull. So just to the outside of the eyes here. And we'll press in gently there and do a little massage as well, just massaging the whole face 
Even though our hands are only pressing into this one little spot, you may be feeling the muscles of your entire face moving. Softening the face. Soften the jaw. You can open your mouth a little and let the jaw rock side to side a bit if, you, if it doesn't hurt you or you don't have TMJ. And then if you're rotating your fingers still, switch the direction of rotation. Gently press in here. You might get a little bit more leeway of pressing here than you did on the forehead. From here, I'm going to take my fingers down to my earlobes and grab my earlobes and my thumb and pointer finger and just pull down a little bit. So I'm pulling my earlobes towards my shoulders. And now I'll take my fingers to the back of my ears and pull them down towards the ground. And then at this point, anything else you need to do before Shavasana, give yourself that practice. Otherwise, allow yourself to come into relaxation whenever you're ready. Tucking the chin maybe a little bit, tucking the tail a little bit, lifting through the heart, tucking the shoulders a little bit, and letting the heart come back down. You start to bring your awareness back to your body, back into your breathing. Deepen your breath. Start to wake up the body by moving the toes and fingers. And you can also roll the wrists and ankles if you like. 
And then we'll take a big long stretch on the mat. So bring the feet together, press out through the heels, take the hands overhead, interlace the fingers, take the palms away from the crown of your head towards the wall behind you. Inhale as you stretch, pressing out through the palms, pressing out through the heels. And then on an, on an exhale, we're gonna bring the knees into the chest, hug everything in, we'll rock a little bit side to side if you want. Eventually we'll make our way up to seated. So however you like to make your way out. And then when we get up to seated, we're gonna do a few rounds of prana movers. So we'll take the hands out to the side, inhale. Reaching up, you can even arch the back here. Exhale, pressing down. You can even uh, arch, so you, so you round the back. Round, round the back, that's it. So inhale, reaching. Exhale, rounding if you want. And then maybe the last time you exhale, palms touch overhead, then you can bring the palms down to touch the front of your heart. And bow the head a little bit towards ground. And if you'd like to join us in an ohm, feel free. We'll take a deep inhale. Oh. Thanks for practicing with us. The light in these seas and honors the light in you. Namaste. Thank you much. See you next week.